Jeff just walking around the parking lot with a bunch of crushed cans of Red Bull. We're here at Billy Bishop Airport on our way to a helicopter elopement. Helicopter is going to be picking us up here and we're going to be going out to an island, White Cloud Island, I think. I'm here today. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm here today. I'm here today. I'm here today to walk you through my, I would say, more minimal wedding photography kit. Oh, and who is Taylor Jackson? He's a wedding photographer from kind of near Toronto in Canada. He photographs 60 to 70 weddings every single year, except this year, because this year has been pretty shit. This is it. What I also it? have a backup kit usually in the car, which is kind of my additional backup piece. But today, Tim is my backup of backup so that he has an additional camera. So if anything does go wrong, we, we kind of can lean into each other. We both shoot Nikon. I think it's, it's a good thing that we both shoot the same brand so we can kind of swap things if ever required. It's never been something that's been necessary, but on my camera right here, I have a Nikon D780, which is a digital SLR still, and I like it a lot. Make sure you auto fine tune your lenses if you still are on digital SLR. If you're on the D780, uh, you actually, the, the cool thing with AF fine tune is if you're on a zoom, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, you can actually AF fine tune for the wide end and also the telephoto end, which basically means that everything is good, as good as it can possibly be. If you're shooting mirrorless, that's not really a problem because autofocus is a little bit different. On this camera, on this Nikon D780, I have the 58 millimeter f 1.4 this could also easily be an 85 or a 50 depending on which focal length you prefer as a main lens for a wedding day i am super super happy with using a single prime i like to use a 1.4 if things get a little bit dark i'm able to just make it a little bit brighter i don't have to ride the iso as much and i would say with a 1.4 lens or even a 1.8 lens or the the new canon 85 f2 that's coming out that has is that i'm very excited for actually one benefit is you just really don't have to ever go above 5000 iso if you have to go above 5000 iso it's really you're in an environment that is below candle lit in light volume light intensity uh, which means that if it's a wedding people won't physically be able to see each other so don't worry too much if you're shooting a prime and you're up to 5000 iso on a somewhat newer camera you should be all right. So that is camera body number one. This is my main camera body. The only time that I will switch up this lens is probably when we get into the helicopter, but that's kind of a weird situation that doesn't usually happen. Um, I typically use this for getting ready um, all the way through to the ceremony. Editor Taylor here for a brief interruption. Tuesday, officially today, the elopements course is now out and it goes through in detail how I generated 57 leads for local elopement slash smaller weddings. And the, the main benefit of booking elopements and smaller weddings is that usually as wedding photographers, we're booking things for a year or 18 months in advance. Now a lot of these weddings are booking for either two, three, four weeks away, uh, which means you get to generate portfolio, you get to get out and work and you get to, to make some money working a lot quicker. The elopements course, which is available to all members is a full walkthrough of that. It includes my pricing for elopements as well as the Instagram ads and the Facebook ads and everything that went into exactly what I did. And you're able to just replicate that wherever in the world you live. So uh, head over there if you're interested. Uh, as always, my membership site comes with my presets and contract and there's like $2,000 plus of other courses over there. So head over there and check it out. I think that it is definitely something that's going to help you out if you're looking to book more elopements or smaller weddings that are in the, the short, the near the near time frame, not, not next year, in the next, next couple of months. And then in the ceremony, I'll use this. This is my biggest lens. This is a 7200 2.8. It is the FL version, which is, I believe, to be the best 7200 that you can really purchase for any camera system. Um, I love this lens a lot, but what I don't love is that it's a, it's a big lens and to just carry it around all the time. It's also a bit intimidating for your couples. So if you show up to a shoot and this is what's on your camera, it's gonna take them some time to, to warm up to you. So I use that for ceremonies. I'm going to be using that a little bit more today, only because I know the island we're going to, there's no pathways, it's you're just kind of in whatever is kind of growing out there. So I'm going to use this a little bit just so that I can zoom and compose some shots that I would have to run around in potentially dangerous environmental obstacles. This is a Peak Design Everyday Messenger, by the way. And I can fit everything that I would ever need in this bag for a wedding day. I will also be using this lens on my camera when the helicopter comes in so that I'm actually able to get, to get photos of it. Um, so I probably will greet the couple with this only because, again, different circumstances today. On my second camera body, 
I have a 24 millimeter lens. If I'm doing photo video coverage, usually this is my 35 millimeter Tamron. If I am doing photography only coverage, it is my 24 millimeter F 1.4 Nikon lens on my Nikon D850. Last year, this was my main camera body. This year, at least so far, my Nikon D780 is my main camera body. Uh, the main benefit being that once I go into live view on this camera, it essentially becomes a Nikon Z6, maybe without the in-body stabilization. But there are some benefits to shooting it. I detect and everything if I ever do need it, but I do actually prefer shooting through the optical viewfinder. So this is this is camera number two. And, and this is all for cameras and lenses that I bring. I have a wide, a normal lens could be an 85 or a 50 and my 7200. If any of these lenses stops working, this 58 stops working, I can easily use this. If this 24 stops working, I can easily use the 58. And if you ever do need to make a wide angle image with a more telephoto lens, you just build a panorama and now all of a sudden you have a 140 megapixel version of that family photo with 150 people in it. That's all. Jeff's giving us the 10 minute countdown. In my bag, a few other things. I have a Godox V1, Godox, depending on how you want to pronounce it. V1, very, very happy with it. And then I have two, we're speeding it up a little bit because the helicopter is inbound. Um, XT, X2T, sorry, my, my Fuji brain can't pronounce X2T uh, because of the, the X-T2. Uh, I use this simply because it's the one that I have. The X-Pro is also really, really fantastic. And then in here, I have two additional batteries and sometimes I have a charger. I also have a little uh, little cup for this, this Godox guy as well. Extra batteries for this. This battery charge will last for a very, very, very long time. And a couple extra cards. This one's Tim's. Found one of your cards, Tim. So this is it. This is what I go to a wedding with. I have some light stands in my car if I ever do need them. Today, we're gonna be outside, so I'm probably not going to need my flash kit, but I figured I'd bring it just in case. And that's all. Very reasonable, I think. You could buy all of these lenses for, you could get the, the less expensive versions. The Tamron 85 is amazing. The Tamron 35 is amazing. Um, those could easily replace these. And then if you don't want to invest in the actual on brand, so the Nikon 7200 is quite expensive, you can easily get the Tamron 7200 G2, which is also an incredible lens um, to keep the cost down a little bit. But these are things that I use every day and I use them enough to necessitate kind of the best that, that I can, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Thanks for watching. And we're gonna go fly to a place. So find that on the YouTube channel. There's probably a thing floating right here right now and you can go watch watch this, watch what we get up to, because I don't know yet. It's exciting. Tim's never been on a helicopter before. Bye, Tim. Don't forget about the elopements course if you're interested in booking some elopements. It's online now.